the changeless God. God does not change and to establish his changelessness he reveals himself in times and seasons which do not change. Summer has never changed. Winter has never changed. Autumn and spring they don't change. God also establishes himself as changeless or unchangeable in the months of the year. January does not change. February up to December, they don't change. That is God. God has never changed the rising of the sun and the setting of sin. Since creation, Ghana's rainy seasons don't change. They may delay, but they don't change. Every May, June, it will rain. That is how God is dependable. You can trust God. We have looked at how certain people are born into this world with natural graces and giftings, potentials and potencies to make them succeed. Some way, somehow, in their upbringing, because of the environment into which they are brought up, friends that they fall into, voices that they want to hear, people from whom they take advice, they then mess up their potentials, their potencies. Great person born to succeed becomes alcoholic, drunkard, drug addict, prostitute, armed robber, thief, etc., etc., but in your days and in your times, when you discover who you are and the God who created you, and you are able by the revelation of a prophet like Sam Kranchianka to tell you the times and the seasons, I don't see why you have to fail. I met those who were born in May, February, August, and September. I made them understand what they came into this world with so that they can measure their lives by the intentions and the purposes of God. If the enemy has messed up your potential, you need a recovery. A recovery is possible. Can you tell somebody recovery is possible? Recovery is possible. Can you look into somebody's face and say, I shall recover. Tell somebody I shall recover. Yeah, may the Lord answer your prayer. Amen. May the Lord bring your confessions to pass. Amen. Those who are born with the red colors, July, January, October, and November bones. Today, I will be wrapping up with four other groups, namely March, April, June, and December. First, I will prove to you that it is possible for you to be born a great person already. Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. So first of all, I'm establishing that it is possible to be born a great person. It is possible to be born a success. It doesn't matter what you are going through right now. I want you to believe my sermon and my message and my revelations. It is possible to be born. Here is an example of a man, Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 2, verse number 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Verse number 2. Say, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. We are looking for a baby who was born three days ago. But he came into this world with the title and the crown king. We are looking for him. We have seen his star. Today, I have seen your jewel your stone 
<laughs> you were not born alcoholic. You were not born a drug addict. You were not born a failure. You were not born to fail. You were not born to do the things that you are doing which have brought dishonor and shame to your family. You were not. You were born a star. Something has happened. And whatever that has happened, listen to me. I am speaking to you that that thing can be corrected. And today is the day of correction. If you give me an amen, I'll be very excited. Clap your hands and say, whatever that has gone wrong shall be corrected because I was born great. Clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Psalm 139 verse number 13 to 17. Now you said that was Jesus Christ. Now I am coming to you now. Psalm 139. Psalm 139 verse number 13. I will do good news translation. GNT. I will do the GNT. Read it with a loud voice. Ready? Go. All you do is strange and wonderful. I know it with all my heart. When my bones were being formed carefully, you put together in my mother's womb, when I was growing there in the secret, you knew that I was there. Verse 16. You saw me before I was born. The days allotted to me had all been recorded in your book. Before any of them ever began. 17. Oh God, how difficult I find your thoughts. How many of them? And then the NIV brings out some words which I want to live with you. The NIV, New International Version. NIV. Okay? There are some words I want you to pick up. Ready? Go. For? And you knit me together. Verse 14, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God took time and knit you together in your mother's womb. Verse number 15, ready, go. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. The frame here means your, your caricature, your bone, your jaw bone, your head bone, your neck, your skeleton, which God made first before he put in the flesh. It says, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in a secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, God wove you fearfully and wonderfully, and graciously, and powerfully, and victoriously created. Yes. You came into this world with something. Verse number 16. Ready, go. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be all the days what you pass through from january to february from first year to second year to 28 years to 70 years to 80 to 90 god wrote everything planned everything and all you need to do is to discover this god so that you discover the plan look at the way you are messing your life every marriage you go through doesn't succeed what is wrong with you Psalm 139. How precious to me are your thoughts. Oh God, how vast is the sum of them. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. 
How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. So I have established that it is possible to be born with success and greatness hanging on your head. You arrive here on this earth with your life already packaged. Then number two, I want to establish that your life can be described in these precious minerals which God also is associated with. And the reason is that you will not be the precious mineral, but the qualities and the value of those precious minerals are measurable with your life. I can give you three examples. Jesus measured our lives with salt. And he says, ye are the salt of this world, of this earth. If salt loses its taste, then it is thrown away. And daddy, all God is saying is that if you want to know who you are, look at the properties of salt. And then you can know that you are born to preserve society. You are born to preserve your family, to preserve your marriage because salt is a preservative. Salt adds taste to food. So wherever you are, you must add taste and promote peace. That's who you are. Number two, he said you are the light of this world. When a light is lighted, it is put on the table and it gives illumination to the environment or to the surrounding light. All Jesus Christ is saying is that when you look at what light is, what light does, here is another one Paul said, we are ambassadors of Christ. An ambassador is simply a politician or somebody who has been appointed to represent a country in another country. Ghana's ambassador to UK gathers the Ghanaians that he's the father of all Ghanaians there. He promotes Ghana's interest in UK. Represents Ghana. He is called Your Excellency. He uses a diplomatic passport. He doesn't take a visa when he's entering into UK. Because he's an ambassador. And he says, that's who you are. You are an ambassador of God here on this earth. You represent God. You speak for God. You represent God's interest. Now in Jewels, Exodus chapter 28. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 28 quickly. And then I'll move on to March. Boom. Exodus chapter 28 verse number 9. I'll do GNT. Exodus chapter 28 verse 9. God was talking to Aaron and instructing Aaron the priestly garment that he must wear whenever he, he was coming into the presence of God. And here is God. He said, take two Canelian stones. Another version will say uh, Sardius or uh, Sardonyx. Different versions will call them different names. Take two Canelian stones and engrave on them the names of the 12 sons of Jacob. Verse number 10. In the order of their birth. Associate their stones with the birth of the Israelite sons. Six on one stone and six on the other stone. Seventeen. Mount four rows of precious stones on it. In the first row, mount a ruby. A precious stone that is associated with July. A topaz. A precious stone that is associated with November. And garnet, a precious stone which is associated with January. In the second row, an emerald, a precious stone which is associated with May. A sapphire, and a, a precious stone which is associated with September. And a diamond. In the third row, a turquoise. And an agate. 
and an amethyst. A precious stone that is associated with February. And in the fourth row, a burial. And then a carnelian. And a jasper. These are to be mounted in the gold settings. 21. Each of these 12 stones is to have engraved on it the name of one of the sons of Jacob to represent the tribes of Israel. Verse number 29. When Aaron enters the holy place, he will wear this breast piece engraved with the names of the tribes of Israel so that I, the Lord, will always remember my people. The fact that the guy enters with these precious stones with names written on it according to the date and their time of birth, God says it's enough to remember. What would he remember? He would then remember the preciousness of the stone and he will make you same. He will remember what you came into this world with. He will remember how you were born and what you were born for. He will remember to wipe away their sins. He will remember to forgive them. He will remember his covenant. He will remember his promises. He will remember his word. Now what you have been waiting for? At least I have. Oh, oh, oh. One more scripture. One more scripture. I, I want to make sure that every doubt and every argument is settled on this teaching. One more scripture. First Peter chapter 2 verse number 5. One more scripture. First Peter chapter 2 verse number 5. Now, read with a loud voice and make sure you are reading what I'm reading. Ready, go. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Verse 4. Ready, go. Rejected indeed by men, but chosen. And read it again. Uh huh. Uh huh. It, it doesn't matter what people are saying and what, what the world has offered you, what your family and what your environment. That is them. Before God, you are living in a precious stone. You are a gem. You are associated. That's what you are carrying. So therefore, as a living stone, you are being built up in a spiritual house so that you do some things. Verse number five. There are some things you can never do if you don't discover who you are. So that you do what? Number one. You will be a true priesthood and to offer spiritual sacrifices so you can worship God well. When you discover who you are, you can give good offerings. You can pay better tithe. And then what is acceptable to God through Jesus Christ? Let me see by hands. Those who desire to write a check of $100,000 for oil dough. Let me see my hands. Those who desire to write a check of $100,000 for oil dough. Let me see my hands. Raise it high. God has seen you. All those who show the desire, take your checkbooks and write $100,000 flat flat for me. Something is preventing you. What is preventing you now is that poverty. Even though you were born a precious stone so that you show forth God's sacrifices and what is acceptable unto God, you will see that there are hindrances. But I have come to confront those hindrances. Whatever that is preventing you, clap your hands and say, get out of my life. Yeah. Clap your hands and say, devil, yeah. every stumbling block, I remove out of my way. Now, nah. in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and let that sleep leave your eyes now. You, you see how you desire to do it. But the means are not there. But I came to prophesy. That desire shall materialize. That desire shall see a manifestation. Is somebody hearing the prophet Sam Crunchy Ankara? Can you rise up and shout and say, I receive it? I receive it. 
you will not be stopped anymore. You've met a woman you want to marry, but you don't have money. Clap your hands and shout and say, it's over. Last week, your landlord harassed you bitterly and you want to move out. But where is the money for the advance? Clap your hands and say, it's over. Your desire shall see a manifestation. Desire shall see a manifestation. If you were born in March, you are associated with a precious stone called aquamarine. Aquamarine is also called burial. That's the biblical name, burial. The modern name is aquamarine. Aquamarine comes from the Greek word sea water. Sea water. People who are born in this month, by the measurement and the description of the preciousness of the stone with which they came, they are usually very confident people. You came with a natural boldness from heaven. So if you are much born and you are timid and afraid to take steps, I kill that spirit today. Because it is not your portion. You didn't come here with that. I, that thing, I, it will leave you. They are bold people. That's who you are. Here is what you came with. You also came into this earth with a lot of love. So when you are much born, whether people love you or not, you don't care. You came with enough love. You know how to make yourself happy. So, so you, you don't care who does what. Some of you, you leave church and you drink poison because your husband wants to leave you not much born. If you are married to a match born, you better hold him or her as an egg. You have enough love. Match bonds are faithful people. And they understand a lot of friendship. When you make friends with them, they can maintain friendship for a very long time. They can make friends for a very long time. So if there is any match born who is not reliable, something is wrong with that person. The person is going to receive deliverance today. Oh, the amen was very weak. Match bones are also very intelligent. They came with natural, natural intelligence. They don't struggle in school. So if there is a match bone who is struggling, that person should come to the altar 13 times before the end of the year. April bones. April bones are associated with diamond. The Greek word for diamond is Adamas, which means hard stone. Adamas, hard stone. It is the most expensive of all the jewels. It has longevity, it stays very long, hard, beautiful, crystal white, crystal clear. It comes in other colors though. Every bones are born naturally wealthy people. That is why diamond is so wealthy. That's who they are. So if you are every born and you are poor, today when I finish, you pray your intestines out. Because baby, you, something must leave you. You must go back to the original womb of your, father, your mother in the spirit and let God weave you again. You must be woven again. I feel like money is coming right now. Clap your hands and say, money! Come! I feel it, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Somebody is changing your destiny. Somebody is changing. Clap your hands and say, destiny! Change! I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. I feel it right now. I feel it. I feel it that a miracle is happening. I feel like a miracle is happening. I feel like, say, wealth! Money, you are mine. God gave you to me, and I will never lose you. Come, 
now. Clap your hands and give God some praise. Every bones are very wise. They came with wisdom. And that is true. If anybody who is wealthy is very wise. So God gives you wisdom and helps you to make money. That's who you are. So if you have wisdom and your wisdom does not turn into money and success, something is wrong. They have wisdom. They are fearless. They are fearless. And then watch this. They know how to maintain relationship. That is why they, we use them as, as wedding rings and, 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 and engagement rings. They understand relationship. They know how to maintain relationships. There is a particular month that a lot of evil happens. It is the month of June. Now watch who they are and find out whether what is being happening must be happening. June bones. June are associated with the ornament called pearls. Pearls. Pearls usually come in whitish, milky color. And they normally are formed from the shells of oysters, seafood. The, 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 the shells of seafood, you know, that, that's where they, they, they make the pearls from. And why they call it pearls is because it comes with the shape of pear. It comes with the shape of pear. So they call it pearls. Anybody who is born in June is associated with this. And you are, number one, naturally a peaceful person. June bones don't like fighting. They don't want in Tokwan. That is why Satan saw and decided to attack their month. Because he knows that when he attacks them in June, they will still be quiet. They are peaceful people. That is why the devil decided to increase accidents and bloodshed in June. Because he knows that that's what June people want to pent but clap your hands and say this nonsense is over clap your hands and say this nonsense it is over June bones are pure people purity they love purity purity if you are married to a June born please stick to him and stick to her they are very dependable June bones are stable in character, stable character, they are loyal and faithful, and they are very modest, modest people. June bones don't spend lavishly like other months, like May, March, December, December. December will be called associated with a mineral called turquoise. Turquoise. Or the biblical name is jacinth. 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 Turquoise. Turquoise. Turquoise comes with the color of bluish and greenish. And so those of you who always think that turquoise is green, it's wrong. Turquoise is blue. Blue, green. That's it there. Blue with patches of green. The Hebrew name, Tekois, or Tekois, it's because they, brought, they, they first found it, or it was brought to Europe the first time from Turkey. So they started calling it Tekois, or Tekois. These are my bones. You were born into this world, into this world, Carrying natural blessing and prosperity with you. Natural blessing and prosperity. Good health. These are my bones. You come with good, 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 good health. So if something is happening to your health, that thing must be corrected. These are my bones are naturally successful people. Successful and happy. They have very strong character. 
you can't defeat them when they fall seven times they rise again you drive them from home they will get another home you pull down their house they'll build another house you are strong when you know the conditions and circumstances under which you are born and when you know what you came here with the next thing is that you must fight and do everything to walk in the traits of that calling. I know they're here. It's important. You were born a successful person. Find out why you are not succeeding. And correct whatever that is wrong. By prayer, by faith, by the word, by sacrifices, by holiness, by righteousness, by everything. When I, I checked the February... I was humble. I have never known anything about this until when I began to teach about the subject of God's changelessness in seasons and times. And then I began to search. Then I went to February. Then February tells me I am born Emitist, not Atheist. We are not Atheist. Emitist is, is another jewel. Here's our color. Blue, white, and then velvet, purple. Kingship, rulership, authority. And then number two, I learned that we are very spiritual people. We were born highly spiritual. We come into this world just loving God. Two, we came with wisdom. We came with leadership mantle. And I didn't know this. But here is how I have been able to discover God's purpose for my life. I had to discover Jesus and to find God. And to start following the word of God. Working in the precepts and the principles whereby I discovered, now look at me, leading spiritual people with prophetic and anointing, with wisdom and grace. I'm providing leadership. I didn't know. But I know some other February bones who died alcoholics, failures. I know some February bones who gave birth to 20 children without taking care of them. Why? Because they didn't discover the God that I have discovered and the Christ that I have discovered. So everything begins. So here is Jesus Christ that we are told that was born a king. And then people wanted to put him on the carpet on the ground. Jesus Christ is preaching and then people will come and your mother and your cousins are looking for you. He said, who are my mothers and my cousins? My brothers and sisters are those who are hearing me preach the gospel. And then Jesus said, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? I know why I came here. And that's what I'm doing now. Nobody will stop me. That's Jesus for you. Oh, but what I love about Jesus Christ, and, and, and I will never stop preaching this. He was traveling with his disciples. And then their, their boat began to overturn with, with, with storms and everything. And Jesus was sleeping. Then they went and said, Master, don't you care that we perish? And he just got up and eh, eh, eh. peace is still. And the Bible says the place went calm. Now those guys, who is this? Who the sea and the storm can obey? King James says, what manner of man is this? But I don't like the King James. I like this new version. Says, who then is this? Who can speak to the sea and calm it? You know what Jesus was doing? Jesus was only walking in the precepts of the calling with which he came. That's all. He, he just was discovering who he was. Oh, come on now. I'm talking about the changeless God here. Look at Jesus Christ. He, he, he comes to the sea. And these two guys, fishermen, were struggling, 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 washing their net. He said, have you guys got some fish? Uh, they said, not yet. We took that. Business is bad today. He said, give me your vessel. I want to preach. He preached a powerful sermon. After that, he said, launch your net. Don't go deep. Just launch. And then, Piero look at him and said, sir, I have taught the whole night. Uh, and we caught nothing. But... If you say so. And then they launch. And then Piero called it. James! John! Come! Hey! The Bible says they loaded fish that began to tear their net. And began to sink their boat. 
Jesus, the one who was born, has discovered why he came on this earth to change life. He said, I must work the works of him whilst it is day. Why it is day? Twelve years, he went to the temple, argued with people, and then for three days, his parents could not locate him. And then finally, his parents located him. Hey, 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 Jesus, we are bad boy, we are bad boy. Hey. He said, Daddy, Mommy, don't you know that I must do the work of my father? Hey, who is this? He was born with it. and He knew it and he said, I must walk in this track of my calling and my birth. What has happened to you? What happened to your stone? What happened? Why are you behaving and walking like somebody who has been born and bathed and created from hell? You don't talk like God. You don't behave like him. In faith, in purity, in character, in righteousness, in holiness, in example, you don't resemble God. And yet he said you were wonderfully and fearfully woven and made and created. From your mother's womb. Here is what I like. Another one. Another one. Jesus was preaching, 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 preaching. And then they came and whispered to him. The one you love, Lazarus. He's very sick. Jesus said, okay, let me finish my preaching. That's why I came. He was preaching, 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 preaching. And then they came and said, Sir, don't bother yourself again. He's dead. And then when they told him that Lazarus was dead, then Jesus clapped his hand. Everybody, okay, I have preached enough. They said Lazarus is asleep. I want to go and wake him up. And then the guy reminded him, Sir, I didn't say he's asleep. I said he's dead. Then, then Jesus said, okay, follow me. Everybody, let's go. And then when Jesus Christ was going, here comes the two sisters of uh, Lazarus, Martha and Mary. <laughs> ah, Jesus. <laughs> if you had been here on time, <laughs> our brother wouldn't have died. <laughs> Jesus said, Mary, Martha, stop crying. I have come to raise your brother Lazarus. Yes, Lord. We know that you raise him on the last day when the trouble son. He said, nonsense. I am not talking about the last day matter. I am talking about now. I am the resurrection and the life and the one that believes in me. Oh, Jesus. When you know who you are, nobody can pull you down. Nobody. I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, your brother will rise up today. You were born with something, man, brother. You were born with something. You were born with something. If I hadn't found Jesus Christ, maybe I would have been a leader of an armed robbery group. If I hadn't found Jesus, I am the resurrection and the life. When you contact me and you are dead, you will rise again. That's who I am. I was born with it. I came here. That's my mission. I understand them. Mary and Martha, they started going back, shaking. Then Jesus said, where did you, where did you put him? Show me. He said, yeah. Roll away the stone. Nobody wanted to do it. I said, roll away the stone. He said, he's been dead for four days now, you know. By this time, he's thinking. I say, haven't I told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Haven't I told you? They wrote a stone. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I thank you that today there is going to be a confirmation of why I came into this world. Lazarus, come out. For the dead body, stinking, where the worms ran away to, I can't tell. How life came into that body, 
I can't tell. But one thing I know is that there is life in the word of God. John chapter 10. Jesus looked into the faces of those people and said, I am the doorway. Anyone who does not come through me is a thief. Verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. 26. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. That's a whole sermon. That's a whole sermon. My sheep hear my voice. Every true child of God, you know how to identify the voice of God when God is speaking to you. Number two, the true mark of a child of God is that he follows God. And then number three, a true child of God, verse 28. Verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall they be plucked out of my hand. These are the qualities of a true sheep. You hear God's voice. Not man's voice, not the concerned voices, not the okra mouth, not those who discourage you, not those who lie to you. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And when they follow me, they can they are not able, they are not taken from me from my hand. Nobody plucks them from my hand because they have eternal life. Eternal life comes through the word of God, no matter how hard it is. When the spirit of God is working. Don't stand in the way of God. Be careful. This small congregation, uh, anytime the pastor is preaching, this elder sits in front. And they'll say, preach on pastor, preach to them. Preach on pastor, preach them. And this pastor was getting worried. Sunday after Sunday. One day when the pastor came to church, nobody came to church. It was only the the elder, the pastor said, ah, Lord, I thank you today. I will fire this young man. Because every day I'm preaching, he says, preach to them. Preach to them. Preach to them. Today nobody came. He is the only person. And the pastor said, ha. Ah, brother, turn your scriptures to Galatians chapter 5, the works of the flesh. And the pastor preached, 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 preached. The man was quiet. When the pastor finished preaching, he went to the pastor. Said, pastor, it was a very powerful sermon. It was unfortunate that the people didn't come here to. <laughs> when you hear the word of God, harden not your heart. Humble yourself. Because this is the way to discovery of your good self, your original make. Why you came into this world. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 29. My father which gave them to me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them from my hand. I and my father, bold declaration. It is only a person who knows who he is who can say that. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Verse 32. Then Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of the works are you going to stone me? And then, this morning I said, Jesus, you two, you like trouble. You have said some bayous things, dangerous things. You and the father are one. Everyone want to stone you. Just keep your mouth shut. Then he said, Ah, which of the good works are you going to stone me about? Who are you? With what were you born with? Where has the devil messed you up? The word, prayer, your faith, your obedience are the secrets for a turnaround to discover. It is my prayer that you have a story. You must give a testimony. You must be celebrating God's miracles and Never fail me yet. Never fail me yet. Jesus Christ. Never fail me yet. 
There's one thing I know everywhere and I go. Jesus love never fails. Come on, come on, come on. Can you talk to God? Never fail. Talk to Jesus. Hey. Never failed me yet. Oh, Jesus, Jesus love has never failed, failed me yet. There's one thing. There's one thing. There's one thing. I know. I know. Yes, I know. Come on, say. Everywhere. Come on, say. I know. Come on, say. Jesus love. Jesus Christ. Never failed. He would never. He would never. Say it again. Never, never fail me yet. Come on, say it. Never fail me yet. Come on, say it. Jesus' love has never failed me yet. Are you sure? Are you sure? There's one thing. Can I hear your voice and your prayer? Can I see a mighty clapping? Can I see a clapping of your prayer? Can you make a joyful noise? My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. <laughs> Have you heard God's voice today? What is it that is happening to you? I want you to fight that thing and defeat it. Something wants to cut short your life. Something wants to cut short your grace. Something wants to cash out. Clap your hands and shout. They will fail. Clap your hands and shout in the name of Jesus. I pronounce failure. They will fail. Lift up your voice. Say it again. Never fail me yet. Never fail me yet. Jesus Christ. Has never failed. One thing, that's one thing I know. Say it again. Everywhere. 